and I'll put up the spoiler warning for this. So nobody should be watching it unless they've seen Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. And I know these questions are probably difficult for you to answer because you are actually filming that movie and I don't want you to have to reveal anything too soon. But first, I'll give you the softball question. Will we learn Grace's real name in the second part? I asked McHugh this and he just kind of looked at me and he was like, he gave me this look where he goes, ask me no questions, I tell you no lies. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Yeah, so I wish I knew, but it's wise that they're keeping me in the dark as well because it keeps me on my toes too. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, here, here's my, my meteor question that you might be able to tease here. So I'm sure Grace is going to have a lot to learn as far as the skills required to be an IMF agent, something that is required of all agents. But what is something one of a kind to like who she is and how she operates that will bring something different to the IMF, something that it gets from no other agent it employs? Um, I think that she's, you know, she's not one thing. So she's, you can't label her as the femme fatale, that she uses seduction as a tactic to manipulate people when she's pick, picking their pocket, as she does with Ethan at the beginning. And some people are like, oh, is there a romantic agenda between them? And I, the way that I see it is that she's, she's sussing someone out and she knows that she can use her own, you know, seductive energy to get what she needs or, you know, have doors open for her because uh, she's clever. And so, th but, so that's not sort of, and that's not her running agenda with Ethan throughout the whole film, which I love in an action film, that you don't have someone who is either the badass woman who's, because that's, that's still, a, that's one facet of a well-written character, but you want more than that. You want nuance. And so you want the audience to feel like she's relatable and the audience are kind of watching the experience through her eyes a little bit. Um, so I, yeah, and I would, I would say also, that again, she, because she's hyper vigilant, she's always looking around to see where the exit is, where the danger is, who she can pickpocket, who she can put something, she who she can put to pocket, which was a kind of a whole new world of for me discovery of going how handy if you don't want to hold something, just slip it into the pocket of the person beside you and then go back for it later, and then none the wiser. Um, so just having that sort of playfulness and that mischievousness, I love bringing to her. Do you do that for fun now? <laughs> I would, but I'm a terrible liar. So I would, I, if I did it, I would then tell the person immediately. <laughs> I feel like this is a bad suggestion, but you should totally like take the rest of this press tour and like, I don't know, like sign things or put like notes in people's pockets, it's attending events and premieres and they go home and they're like, oh my God, one of the stars in the movie I love just did it. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna take you up on that challenge. I think it's a big okay. challenge and I can see, see if the next uh, screening in New York and then one in Tokyo, I'm gonna see if I can do it. I feel like I need to find someone who I know is going to that New York premiere so I can give you a good target. Yes. Yeah. I definitely know people are going to be there. Man. I, I think that's so fun. I mean, it's like, well, it, it's, you know, I'm a prankster. I love playing pranks on people as long as they're like, it doesn't upset them or scare them too much. But that to me is like a great prank. It's a little like Grace was here. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> 